morning it's uh, quarter past 11 on friday the 27th of october uh, 2023 <clears throat> i'm just driving to the gym to meet joe and i've had one of those random mind farts about doing a little bit of um video doc thing on what i do for a living I do this, I get random thoughts, random ideas, <clears throat> and I've just thought, let's see what happens. Got nothing to lose ever. You know, some people are quite interested in in what I do for a living. Um, it'd be good for people to see the reality of working in property. The reality right now is that I'm sat in a frigging traffic jam. It's raining and it's sunny. Lancashire weather for you. Uh, so there, there we go. So I haven't got a clue how this is going to go. Don't know what's going to be on it. Don't even know if I'm going to carry on doing it. But uh, I'm due to start the gym in 15 minutes. I go four days a week. I am by no ways a slim gym, shall we say. Uh, I enjoy drinking far too much in the evenings going out for meals and enjoying life so this is basically my way of uh, not getting fatter shall we say so yeah that's it pretty much right well i'm gonna sign off and we'll see what this video has have a good one just got here now i can't be asked really tired only been back from holiday a couple of days so hour of pull gotta look old oh I'm, I never brush my hair I'm so lazy so there we go finish the gym That's 
that's me as a, as a sort of landlord. Um, at this moment in time, I do property sourcing, uh, property renovations, and owner lettings agency. Um, so, uh, we've got about 200 properties on uh, being managed in the lettings agency, all which we've sourced by maybe two or three. We've had some um, landlords come to us, but the, the rest of the, the sort of properties that we manage, um, they're all things that we've sourced, renovated, and then obviously managed, because that, that's, that's basically the core of the business. When I first started off way back when, I think it was, I'm sure it was 2017, um, I was only really looking to do flips, so I think within the first couple of years I did five or six, I should really look at what I've been up to really before talking shit. Um, so originally I was doing flips, I'll probably get into like the backstory at a later day, because it's, it's long winded and I just can't get out right now. Um, I was borrowing money privately off, for, it got to about 10 people at one point. Uh, so what I do is I buy properties in cash, um, renovate them, flip them on, and then um, obviously pay the client back, then I keep the 20 odd grand profit or whatever. <laughs> so at the start that's what I was doing quite heavily. Um, because property prices were ridiculously cheap, like you, you could pick things up 30, 40 grand all day long, which now is just, well, it doesn't even exist anymore, the property prices have grown that significantly in such a, sh well, a relatively short period of time, um, you just can't get stuff like that anymore. Anyway, I digress. So again, I was sort of... Uh, I was driving along, I seem to get a lot of my ideas when I'm driving, because I do a lot of driving. Um, I just thought to myself, reject that. Uh, I just thought to myself, what what would I actually do if suddenly I couldn't get hold of any flips and I couldn't, you know, do it you know, that side of the business. Um, no regular income, because obviously flips are junky money. To myself, shit, I do something about this, and then pretty much racked up quite a few rental properties in a short period of time. I had a couple of flips that I was selling, uh, decided to keep them, rent them out, uh, just to give me a sort of base income, you know, in case shit hits the fan. I knew I had some properties bringing some cash in, and I could still pay my bills. Uh, which I'm glad I did now because obviously finding flips nowadays is it, it's really challenging. Um, the numbers are just so hard to stack up now. So many people who've sort of dived into the areas that I operate in, overpaying, etc. So yeah, really glad that I did that. Then, as I, as I was saying, I was working with clients who were lending me money. They basically kept a few of them were asking, well, would you ever think of managing a property for me because, you know, the, the purchase prices were really good up here and the rents were decent. It weren't anything that I ever wanted to do. Far from it. I was like, what? You know, you're getting 450 quid a month and for 45 quid a month I'm going through all that stress. I thought, no, you can sort of right off. Anyway, yet again, it was one of those driving along and I literally just thought, fuck it, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Um, and then that's how the lettings agency started. Um, well, pretty much similar timing to the, I think the sourcing came, well, I suppose the sourcing and the lettings came hand in hand because clients wanted property didn't they? Um, not gonna lie, it's all a bit, a bit faded now because it, it was 
so long ago I can't remember the exact sort of steps, uh, how it happened. But yeah, that, that was that was it. Uh, did, got a few rentals for a few clients. Uh, did a few flips, sold them to, to clients, managed them. Um, started sort of posting what I do on social media, you know, the Instagram, the Facebook. Um, also used to post a journal on the Property Hub. They used to have a, a forum, which I've occasionally got people getting in touch, asking me. And then the business just grew then. Uh, word of mouth, recommendations, um, friends of obviously clients, family members of existing clients, uh, occasionally some new people getting in touch. And that's sort of the gist of how the business gradually evolved to where we are today. We're, like I say, we're, we're managing 200 properties. I'll have sourced well over 200 uh, because we have done flips for clients as well. And then pretty much renovate every property that we buy for clients. Uh, I've done 20 odd flips for myself, maybe 10 for clients. Probably. So again, probably in the 200-ish range for the amount of renovations. And I'd say the bulk of this was in the last, the, the main bulk was probably in the last maybe four years. That's, that's basically a little bit about me. Um, I think one of the, the, what's the point in you doing like video in this sort of stuff? Da, 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 da. <coughs> I think from the start I've always been really open and transparent about what I do. Um, people think property is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Until maybe uh, whenever when, we, when whenever COVID kicked in, we were on the uh, during the very first lockdown. I literally ran all three companies on my own. So at that point, I was doing the sourcing, the renovating, so the project management side of it, the lettings agent, dealing with all the tenants, you know, listing the properties, literally everything, all on my own. Um, Remember, I remember it vividly. I was I was up in a makeshift office in the bed in the bedroom. I've been working from maybe seven in the morning till nine o'clock at night, and I just thought to myself, I, I can't do this anymore on my own. It was it was to the point where I was just physically and mentally done, which is when I took on my first person who started to run the lettings agency for me and then roll on um, then took my sister on she runs my lettings agency now and the girl who was running the lettings agency now works with me on sourcing so we've got someone to do the bulk work on that now um, lettings agency uh, we've got an admin lady who works with her as well uh, my mum works for me, she does a lot of property staging, um, up until a few months ago my nephew was working for me, so he was doing, helping on the sourcing, whereas things have quietened down obviously with the interest rates and it being a bit soft on the market and need to sort of let him go because we, we just weren't getting that turnover to justify it. That's it. And then within the sort of renovations business, I have a lad called Matt who works for me, who does a lot of the general handyman type things. Sean Builder, he works for me. He's actually self-employed, but <laughs> he's not left my side for three years and hasn't worked for anyone else. But he's still self-employed. So that that's just in case, you know, ever got quiet and couldn't give him work which at the moment isn't happening, but we've got to be careful. You know. um, I've got another lad called Sean too, 
not too short. He works three days a week for me again on the renovation side. I think that's everyone who sort of works for me at the moment, which considering started off little old me driving round in a what was it? Um, Volkswagen V7 here that I picked up for 1500 quid, working on site on my own, doing everything on my own, um, lagging my way, making out that was a big company when I was just me on my own. You know, I had the, the website set up, I had a landline phone number, you know, the old saying, fake it till you make it. That's what I did at the very start, um, give the illusion that I was a uh, bigger company than what I am and that, that worked for me, uh, opened quite a lot of doors, I'll probably go into that at some point. Well yeah that's that's me, that's who I am, um, you know we have got a good sized portfolio personally behind me now, I've helped a lot of clients get their own portfolios, you know we have everything from clients who've got a single unit to I think we've got a client who's got 12 with us you know I've got some clients who are aggressively looking to buy large numbers of properties you know they want the target 30 40 and I think it's quite nice that I've always try to try to be as normal as possible so I do swear people, some people won't appreciate it but you know I'm a normal person so Apologies if I offend you, um, I won't bullshit anyone, so I won't try and recommend a house to someone that I don't think is worth it, you know, I'm not like some people who, who just go through life lying, uh, deceiving people, can't stand it, I just don't see the point, you know, the reality is within the property market, there's more than enough money for everyone to do well, you know. I make a little bit, my clients make a lot more, and it works, you know. I've, I've done well for myself, you know. I'm on paper, I could probably stop working and never do anything again, but what's the point, you know? My kids, my youngest lad's 10, my daughter's 14, about to turn 15. Retiring for, I can't do anything. I can't, you know, just get up and go on holiday and live that lifestyle. And, and to be quite honest, I think if you want to retire and you want to stop working, I think you need a little bit more money behind you coming in. Uh, roughly, mine's about eight grand a month after costs. I think is it eight? Yeah, I'm sure it is. I think it's about. 12 or 14 net and then 8 grand after I paid mortgages and buildings insurance and stuff which is a decent chunk but you know if you're going to spend the rest of your life having fun I think you want a bit more cash plus it's all going to the kids everything so you know I want to make sure that my kids don't have to do what I did so when I, I first started working I worked in discount retail which is awful awful so 60 70 hours a week absolutely minging uh, you know i want my kids to so i can subsidize them a little bit so they, you know they're not worrying about money they can have a job that they actually enjoy you know it doesn't have to be a high paying job you know so they can survive it can be something that maybe they're passionate about you know my daughter loves horses absolutely loves them was riding every every Saturday, helps out the stables, works at another stables on a Sunday for free, nine while four, just because she loves it, you know, she's sort of mentioned now that she likes to get into equine studies, which I suppose you can earn some decent wedge on that, so, you know, if I was able to one day buy her a, a stables or something where she could do all that, then she's happy, I'm happy, you know, I've been able to provide for her. She's doing something that she's passionate about. So that, that's the reason why I'm not retiring. Plus, to get bored, Christ. Even when we go on holiday, I struggle. Jesus, the first day I 
find really, really hard. Um, it takes me a while to relax and then before you know you're coming back home. You know, I get up every day, 6am, 7's a lag in, make a brew, laptop on, working. Um, seven days a week. I think the only days I probably won't do anything is more around, even on holiday, laptop comes with me, I work every morning. I think the only days of the year that I, I pretty much don't do anything is Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Day. Because um, we now we now shut the office over Christmas, which is a new thing for me. I never really had Christmases off. Um, unless a client gets in touch, because I'm always on the end of the phone then, I'll, I'll do some of them. Stop recording and listen to an audio book for the rest of my journey.